day everybody and it's Klaxon and Hunter here and if you guys enjoyed this video you should subscribe for more Ruby videos. Check out the Patreon if you guys want to support the channel and see videos like this early and you should join the Discord server if you guys want to talk about Ruby with us. So we are talking about Ruby today. Unfortunately it is not a happy affair and it is that Amity Arena is shutting down and so if you guys don't know it was a Ruby game that came out in March 2018 and so now 2021 it had a pretty lengthy lifespan compared this to other true. Ruby games. Yeah. I would also say that it is probably the best Ruby game since Grim Eclipse that has come out among the deck building uh, game, oh, which uh, also shut down, if you uh, guys remember. It did? I think, yeah, wow. I think it did. We made a video about it. Uh, so deck building shut down. Uh, Ruby Crystal Match. I don't think the game has shut down, but they've been awfully quiet. That was by Crunchyroll Games. They just, it seems but like they've like, abandoned it. Uh, it's the, cr the yeah, little yeah, matching yeah. game. Uh, and it's so, yeah, it seems like that those developers abandoned the game. They haven't been active on Twitter can in a we, long can while. Can we talk about how <laughs> Ruby games have just not been historically historic. I love yeah. Ruby they have it like the board game I remember yeah. I pre-ordered that the shit. board game is good it's just about having other people to play with I Honestly, tried to play it it's so it, complicated maybe I'm just dumb I'll be the first to admit I might just be dumb I couldn't figure it out yeah so maybe the thing with the board game is is that they should have made it like a tabletop uh, like a simulator type game where Dragons you could almost. play it online with people instead Ooh. of it being an actual physical board yeah. game because the problem seems to be is that people are saying I love this but the only time we ever play it is at RTX like there is never oh. a good time <laughs> to play this game because we don't have any friends in real life that want to play it so it seems like people have managed to play it it's just about how um, how well, I guess, the, see, the pool, the no player Ruby pool fans, is, right? No Ruby fan can have the time to play that because they've all started their own Ruby tuber channels. Oh, boy. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's the... It's the unfortunate bit there. Then there's also Grim Eclipse, which yeah. remember when we would play that? Oh, I think that's probably the game I'm best at. Those are the dark at. ages of like Just because of the amount content. So they read the title and they were like, mm, Cal, this is good shit. I'll click on this. Okay, so this is the theory that Emerald is actually Crow's daughter. What? <laughs> we have like we have 200 to... hours, 150 hours in Grim Eclipse. Oh, like think about all the other games we could have played, but instead we played that three hour game, 158, <laughs> like whatever one. I think that's one of the few games I've 100 percented, but yeah, that it's like I mean it's kind of like a warm part of my heart, but it's good for like three hours and then never again. Yeah, so let's just talk about this. First of all, is this indicative to Ruby fans not wanting games? I don't think so. No. I hope that Rooster Teeth isn't looking at this and being like, well, the Ruby fans, they just don't like video games. Like, because this has nothing to do with Ruby fans not wanting a game. I think that even though Amity Arena was the best one, mm -hmm. we also have to admit that all the other Ruby games have either sucked or they've been a bad, like, I'm just gonna say it. Deck building was needlessly oh, complicated. It was so awful. Weird. It was awful. It was not user friendly. I was at excited all. for that right? one, too. It was Whoa. not, uh, it was not very player friendly, okay? Like that was a very niche game that they tried to pull. Like it didn't make any sense. Making deck building made zero sense. I think they okay? didn't want it to be like Magic or Hearthstone or yeah. Indio, so they tried to do something really unique, but instead of like unique and fun, it was unique and confusing exactly. and Exactly, and then Crystal like, Match on the other end is almost too casual. Yeah, like, it's like Crystal I don't... Match is almost too casual it's in the, the complete jewel. opposite direction. And then you have Amity, which I really enjoyed. Like I mm -hmm. remember when I was in university, I would play Amity Arena like every single day in class, like that in, in class and on the train, like that would be my whole like school day would be listening to a lecture and playing Amity Arena. Cause I don't know if you guys know, but I have ADHD <laughs> and so scrolling on my phone is a very like it is a uh step in having to listen to any sort my of my grades professor. are terrible but my amity arena game is flawless like, no it helped me focus right and so i used to play it to help me focus but then as we started to stay home more like i remember first of all there was a like a six month period between when we went back to class like when oh. class ended and when we went back like i dropped the game during then but then even being in quarantine it's like i have no reason to play the game i'm at home i can play whatever i I want right mm -hmm. but I really enjoyed the game however we also need to mention that it was a tower defense game <laughs> and I think that the method of how they were running the game may not have helped in terms of it shutting down and why mm -hmm. I say that is it's because 
I'm playing Genshin Impact, okay, which is a gacha game that has come out recently and I've been playing it. And I understand, like, I understand the gacha model in that game because you can get through with the free-to-play characters. You can get through the game, you can easily, like, you like them, you enjoy them. I think I have, like, four or five, like, free ones. They give you five characters or maybe more than that. I think there's some I haven't gotten yet for free and they're great. You can progress if you want to. But on the other end, right, there are characters that look pretty or are hot or have different elements and you may want to go into the store and buy them. I got some free pulls and I got two characters yesterday. Here's why this doesn't fucking work with Amity Arena, okay? Because if you reach a certain level, everybody else has all the cards that you don't have and you need to pull from the gotcha or you will lose every single game, mm -hmm. right? Because if people have legendary cards or they have this like big good card and they're kicking your ass with it, it doesn't matter matter how good of a team you have. So I think that that's the problem with Amity Arena. It lacked the kind of balance. If it was like Genshin, it's just like, oh, you want to play as Winter, you pull for Winter. Like, I, if Ruby was a gacha game, I feel like people would just pull for the characters that they already like in the show. The problem with Amity, it's like, nobody's gonna pull for Winter if Winter is a bad, like, an objectively bad card. It doesn't how, mm -hmm. like, it doesn't matter how much they like her because you're not playing as her. You're just putting her down mm -hmm. on the board like just another piece. Right? Like, I remember my deck was full of, like, White Fang lieutenants and Grim and just character- Like, not People even characters you, you like. Yeah. You don't build a team of characters you like. You build a team of whatever the meta is at mm -hmm. that time. And mm -hmm. other games do that successfully, but I think that Ruby would have benefited from something that's sort of, again, like Genshin. I know that's, like, the only frame of reference I have where it's like, oh, this character's hot? You pull for them from the character uh, banner or whatever you call it because pulling for stuff in Amity is not really satisfying because it's just another piece that you put down and if you don't mm -hmm. have one card, if you don't have Adam or Legendary Pyrrha or uh, Torch Wicked Neo or whatever the case, you're screwed. And if you get Torch Wicked Neo and they debuff them, it doesn't matter how much you like Torch Wicked Neo because they suck ass. That is the idea with Amity that I think was there caused also, some problems. Was there also with Amity the issue of like, I know what helps with other games I've played that are kind of gotcha, like some Yu-Gi-Oh games or yeah. like Stormbreak is that it's ranked so you will yeah. never go against people who are way stronger or way weaker so i think the problem with that is player base right terms. like yeah. eventually like people were talking about how the ranking system kind of sucked and mm -hmm. it's like if you get to a certain point you just can't progress in the rank mm -hmm. and so you can't get the jewel because every time you rank up or something i don't remember exactly how it used to be but when when you got to like past certain levels or certain ranks you got boxes and those mm -hmm. boxes would have cards and those cards would also have jewels so you could pull from the store without buying any money but like if you can't rank up because everybody is a whale at the very top like yeah. it's hard to play competitively if you're free to mm -hmm. play and i think that's true of other games as well i just don't think that the ruby player base was enough to sustain this type of system i think it would be enough to sustain a genshin type system where it's like you get the four girls and maybe you get juniper as free characters mm -hmm. but if you want to play as winter or you want to play as crow you pull from the gotcha i think that that would be the game like, that's what mm -hmm. I imagine. That's, I think that would work because nobody, mm -hmm. like, people care about Sage being in Amity because of the <laughs> lore on his card, but people don't care about pulling for Sage if he's not, like, a card that's, like, breaking mm -hmm. the meta and it's gonna break the game, right? And this is just mm -hmm. us talking from our very limited experience with these types of games and speculating, but I think that system would have worked better than this one because this ultimately is limited by two things and that's player base in terms of ranking up because if there aren't enough players in your rank how are you supposed to mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i understand what you're saying hunter aren't you only supposed to go up against people in your rank but like i remember i would play against the same person like three times just because we we're both playing at the same time and we're the closest also to each procrastinating other, right? in university exactly um, and so, just to talk about this a little bit, but it, they ended payments on the 3rd, so mm -hmm. you already can't pour any more mm -hmm. money. They're giving stuff away, so yeah. if you just wanted to, like, try it out until it shuts down at the end, uh, yeah, yeah, you today. should, you can. But mm -hmm. my other problem is, is the fact that it seems like they're just shutting it down. All user data will be deleted from the shutdown date. And so I sort of wonder why they couldn't have made this a, just, like, you know, to memorialize it just mm -hmm. have the bot games still exist so mm -hmm. you didn't waste all of your money because again not mm -hmm. to bring up Genshin but I'm pretty sure that because it's like you know there's a story mode in Genshin if you pull your characters even if the server shut down you would still have your game yeah, forever provided like, it was downloaded you know, exactly right or mm -hmm. 
on a disc. Genshin doesn't have a disc, but oh. you understand yeah. what I'm saying, right? If you have a game on a disc, you keep it forever. With this, I'm surprised they're just shutting it down without providing a, like, hey, the servers won't be online anymore, but let's make, you know, a little story mode or a bot mm -hmm. mode where we can sort of, you know, have this people fight against, might, care, like, yeah. right? Because I don't understand uh -huh. why they wouldn't do that because everyone's like, well, now I poured my money into mm -hmm. this game and it's just shutting down and I don't even get the single player mode. Like, why not support that again maybe my game expertise isn't enough like maybe would you still need to host a server for so, that or so as long as you this download is, this the is data my guess. isn't it okay my like, guess is the reason why they're not doing this right now is due to like well you kind of hinted on that the economics of it oh so yeah I imagine also COVID, that, right? yeah i imagine that, oh thing. well i don't know if the COVID affected it but i certainly in the beginning this was totally viable because a lot of new people were coming in they were spending money I mean, the goal was probably know. never for it to survive the goal was for it to turn a profit and i think yeah. that for the past two years or two and a half years or however long it's been up there, it's been pulling a profit because the amount of money they've been getting from people buying cards uh, was has greater sustained. than, has sustained them and was greater than the cost of, you know, adding new players, adding new cards, keeping the servers live. But now they're seeing those sort of yeah. shift. Basically, and I maybe imagine, they're not making a profit anymore. Or I don't think they're not making a profit. I think that they're seeing less of a profit so it's the type of thing of like well why try to like i don't know try to let's make not it more pitch our luck right yeah just like leave while let's we're let's cash ahead. out yeah. yeah exactly leave while we're ahead cash out before we could try to like keep on like pumping pumping more money and yeah. try to bring the life of this game when people might just not be interested in it anymore yeah. uh and and that's what i suspect is happening now that's also why i suspect they aren't doing the bot thing because i imagine that yeah. could be expensive and they just kind of want to leave it and not yeah. have to worry about that I just anymore. feel like that the problem is, if I could make a recommendation, sure. it's that people will be distrustful of Ruby games going forward because if you pour your money into something, it will suddenly disappear without any type of warning, without any yeah. compensation given to the player that has supported them. Mm -hmm. And it sucks because, like, I'm of the mind that if you buy something, <laughs> you should be able to keep it. And I understand that with these types of games, like MMOs, like not everything yeah. is World of fucking Warcraft, okay? <laughs> like nothing stays forever. I remember like games I used to play as a kid that I like loved and they're gone now, obviously. The Spider everything, Riders MMO. The Spider I, I knew you were gonna say that. Yes, the Spider Riders game, Toontown, those games eventually shut down i get it it's an mmo eventually something mm -hmm. has to give but with this it's just like can't y'all just add some sort of single player so people aren't mm -hmm. salty about losing mm -hmm. all their money because this is going to influence ruby games in the future in my opinion in terms of fan reception right there's still the way forward game that was announced at rtx that we yes. know literally nothing about which right? i think maybe this is them leading that will to more save stuff. us to, like leaning to stuff that's more kind of like Genshin Impact, more yeah. of a story mode that can exist for longer periods of time. Exactly. And so I think that Way Forward, like that gives me hope. Obviously they haven't given up on Ruby games because the Way Forward game was announced in mm -hmm. theory. Hopefully it's mm -hmm. it's still coming out. We haven't heard about it in a while. But yeah, I just think that this could make people very distrustful. And I think that to some extent Crystal Match did that as well because you have this like, oh, Crunchyroll games, getting everyone involved. Come here and buy Neo. Like all, all mm -hmm. you know, that's Sort of attitude and then they just fucked off and they just disappeared it comes in takes it's the money and they disappear investment. right and so Very i understand that that money is also going to rooster teeth but at the same time you can't help but feel like people are also just trying to profit off the ruby fan base without actually caring enough to, to interact give a good product. to give a good product right yeah. in amity i think they did give a yeah. good product like don't get that's me wrong. what I'll miss i'm about thinking about Emily. crystal match yeah. like i'm thinking about deck building okay i'm thinking about those colossal like crystal match is so like so much of an embarrassment because their twitter account like they were active for like what the first two months and now they just they're dead i'm honestly gonna kind of miss amity arena i didn't play it very much after i think this is probably why i closed off a lot of people that like ruby showed up for the first week and then left yeah but i'll miss it because i love the cards and i love the lore on the back of the cards and whenever there would be a new one everyone would sort of share it yeah i, I do would miss freak that out, like... i hope that i hope that people keep a sort of i guess archive of all of those cards i'm sure you'd be able to find a lot of them online yeah but i wish there was like very full, like a tumblr page that was just all of them because that's like mm -hmm. i don't want to talk about like i don't want to talk about spider riders too much <laughs> But I, I feel like that in terms of like preservation, I don't think that you could do Amity Arena in real life, like just based on how like, you know, like obviously, um, 
like I don't think that you can do Amity in real life as a board game or oh, anything okay, just yeah. because of the nature of how the cards mm -hmm. worked and like you would have to sort of know the the numbers behind everything and so that mm -hmm. seems a little bit complicated but I remember with the Spider Riders game how desperately I wish that people had archived all of the cards because then you could have preserved it in a way to make a physical board game because yeah. it was turn based and it mm -hmm. was based off of like math right so if you put a six card that does six damage like it was yeah. very easy right with this it just seems a little bit more complicated like because you have to account for oh if you have all these little grim and they attack this th like it mm. just seems like a fucking it's very game. video right? gamey it's too can't... video gamey yeah. but i i sort of wished about that and like mm. i remember a couple years ago i was like does anybody have a list of all the cards because i don't think these are all the cards like i remember other cards and i can't find them and so that just made me really sad that like mm. back then like 2007 or whatever right like nobody really yeah, i feel like yeah. nobody really cared and the other thing is is like when you're a kid you think that things will last forever and then when they shut down you have regret like i regret mm -hmm. not recording the spider Ri like on whatever the equivalent of obs was i do regret not recording any of the spider riders game because now i mean there are recordings of it on youtube and stuff but just to uh, the fact that, like, the preservation of the cards mm -hmm. wasn't captured for us to possibly recreate. Like, Toontown got their day. Where's mm -hmm. our day? <laughs> Spider Riders fan. I want to make a whole video about that, actually, in the future. Just weird things that I'm obsessed with. <laughs> I feel like we've talked about Spider Riders a little too much for this video, but yeah. Uh, so I hope that people preserve the cards. I'm sure they'll be on the wiki. Never forget Spider Riders. In our <laughs> hearts forget. always. Let this never happen again. Yeah, and so I'm sure Let's people will, that. basically what I'm saying is I'm sure people will preserve the cards, Hunter. I'm sure it'll be on the wiki and all the lore will be preserved mm -hmm. in that way. Because I think that every time a new card has come out, people have oh, yeah, contributed. Yeah. Even like the legendary ones, I think that people have done that. So yeah, I'm pretty hopeful in terms of pre like preserving the lore. In terms of the fate of Ruby games, I feel like Way Forward, like if the Way Forward game gets cancelled or something, then I'll freak out. Until <laughs> then, this is just indicative of the larger problem with Ruby just not properly knowing what the odd like we want Genshin impact but it's Ruby that's what we want okay so <laughs> do a video of like Ruby games we want yeah exactly and so I feel like that that's what people want people people didn't really want tower defense like I didn't know that I wanted a tower defense but I did so. I really want a tower defense not really like mm -hmm. I feel like that people wanted so badly for Grim Eclipse to just give them coffee and give them skins but I think it's mm -hmm. the same thing that you said Hunter I don't know. I would imagine that Team Coffee and Team Stark would have made the money, but would it have made them enough money to justify the cost of making the model and making yeah. the attacks and exposing what Summer's weapon is, right? And even if you use Team Coffee, it's the same thing, to make the character model, to make all the attacks, to make sure they don't break the game. All imagine up to, if, to imagine record to dialogue. avoid the Summer thing, they just had, uh, it was Stark. Just but, a mystery weapon? But it was like Zark, and so Zwei was oh, Summer's, gosh. and you could just play it. As why that I'd would be kind of be funny. Or I'd it's just that. like Summer has control. something in her hands, but you don't know what it is. It's just, just a big sensor bar. It's just a big sensor bar. You just don't know. Right? And so I think that they could have made money off those skins mm -hmm. and outfits. And I think that the reason why they didn't was probably because, again, of what you said. It's like, okay, well, if we make this, we'll only get a little bit of profit mm -hmm. back. Or maybe they would even lose money. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, even though people said that they would have bought Team Coffee, like, would people have actually showed up for it? Because that's a big thing, too. Just because people say they're going to yeah. buy something doesn't mean that We're those liars, people actually will, right? And so Ruby Games have seen better days. Hopefully things will get better for the Ruby Games. And yeah, that is everything that we have to say. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.